Structural restoration is a useful way of exploring the uh, interpretation of the subsurface as displayed on cross sections. In this particular example, which comes from the foothills of the South American Andes, um, we can try and restore the thrust structures onto a template. In doing so, we're going to assume that the bed length that we can measure on the cross section hasn't changed, it's been telescoped, but the bed length itself we can report back from the cross section onto a restored template. A template that shows the strata horizontal and in its pre-deformed state. So we'll go through the mechanics of how we take information from the cross section and report it back onto the restored template. So let's see how we go about doing that. So this is our cross section with a series of thrusts climbing through the stratigraphic units from a basal detachment and then things getting deeper over on this left hand side. And what we're going to do is to restore this cross section onto a template which shows the stratigraphy with its thicknesses as shown on here but laid out horizontally. The starting point will be a pin which is a line constructed down through the stratigraphy out here beyond which we assume there's no deformation and therefore the layers are glued together we can draw in the restored lengths of these units which we measure from the cross section and report back onto the restored template. Now I find it quite useful when doing these exercises to construct a reference line part way into the cross section which I'll just do here which I'll use to check as we go that this restoration for the more frontal parts is making sense. Again, the assumption is that through this pin in here, or actually it's a, a thing called a loose line, then we'll assume that there's no slip here until you get to that base of the attachment. So in other words, these layers in here, when we restore them, should restore to the same length with respect to each other um, above this base of the attachment. And therefore, this loose line, when we replot it on the restoration, should be perpendicular to bedding, as is here on the cross section. Well, let's just zoom in. OK, off we go. I'm going to mark, first of all, on a piece of paper, the position of the pin on here. And I'm going to make some measurements along the top of the green. There's our first thrust pick. And now we return to the hanging wall and continue making the same measurements along the top of the green to here. There's the next thrust there. Again, back into the hanging wall, hardly any displacement on this structure. And then we keep going along until we get to our loose line. There. So there's our loose line. And we can take these measurements and put them back onto the template. So we line up our pin here with the position there and we can put the first thrust on there measuring it in the second thrust and there's the position of our loose line okay so now we need to add the other horizons in so we'll go back to our pin at the front and measuring the base of the green from thrust slice to thrust slice putting the thrust on and then continuing our measurements over to our loose line like that, and now we can transfer that information onto the template. Thrust one, thrust two, loose line. Next, let's step down, put our pin on, and measure along the blue. Here we go. Thrust one, thrust two, and all the way along now to the loose line that's there. And again, transfer that information onto our template. One, two, there's the loose line. And finally, our little marker bit at the bottom that we can put our units on like this quite carefully and then nip along and put on our loose line like that there we go and there's our loose line our loose line is not bad it's pretty much perpendicular we can just measure in and get the frontal ramp there where it climbs off the detachment let's get that right pop it on there we go and sketch up the frontal thrust like that running along the detachment, back to the loose line, the other thrust there, snapping down to the detachment, climbing up into the yellow rocks. Not too worried about what happens in the yellow. And the key point about this is our loose line 
is more or less perpendicular after our restoration, so we're looking in good shape here. The frontal structures restore and they retain bed length from layer to layer through the thrust structures. So now we can treat this loose line like a, like a pin and continue our measurements back into the thrust sheets. I'll, um, I'm only going to go so far into this, but let's try and put these next couple of thrusts back on. So again, what we're going to do, there is our loose line. I'm going to measure along the top of the green to there. There is our thrust back into the hanging wall and spin this around to account for that. So that's the next thrust. And then we're going to go to here, and I'm just going to finish up at that thrust there. Okay, it's quite difficult in these places to set up an intermediate loose line uh, because these rocks are clearly deformed and there may be interbed slip. So I'm not going to make a big deal of that. So there's our next thrust. So we've got one, two, three thrusts, one, two, three thrusts. Let's take this information back onto our restoration, line up our loose line, at the top of the green, one thrust two thrusts, three thrusts. So now let's continue down into the um, deeper parts of the stratigraphy. Having put the top of the green on, let's put the base of the green on. Again, I'll set this up on the piece of paper. That will be my loose line there, which I'll just label L. And now I'm gonna run back into the um, structures using the base of the green as my marker, thrust one, Again, waggle this around. You need to be quite careful as you go around these corners. Try and capture the full bed length that we've got there. T. And now the base of the green here. Spin it around. Something like that. To the thrust here. Okay, so now let's pop those on for the base of the green. Line up our loose line. Base of the green, thrust, thrust, thrust. Okay, so let's put the base of the blue on now, which is there, just put the loose line on, there's L. So measure on the base of the blue to the thrust, which is to there, thrust. And now the base of the blue from here, in the hanging wall to that thrust, spin it around. T, and then this one here, all the way around this nice little sin form. Around we go. To there, T, again, transfer that information across. And then finally, we can just do the L, this, this marker bed here, one to here, spin that around to there, and now the base here, around this in form, and around to there. T, there's our loose line. And there are thrust trajectories, again, peeling off uh, this lower part in here. So we can just do this coming up like this. Again, we're not going to worry about the trajectory into the yellow, although that one just gently go off. That one goes steeply up. And then this one um, just comes straight through. Something like that. So there are the next set of thrusts. And again, there's detachment along the base in here that separates the brown from the blues and greens above. Well, the next thing we need to do is to put these lower rocks on, the brown and the purple, uh, which we can see under this part of the cross section are not involved in the deformation. They're a long panel in the foot wall below this basal detachment. And we can see that's how it's growing on our restoration with the thrust detached at the top of the uh, brown units. Well, let's put this ramp in here. So for this, what we'll do is we'll go back to our pin at the front here, and I'm just gonna measure in along the base 
of these brown units to there and it's a straight line back to where that thrust cuts up there and that's the base brown. So we can take that information and pop it all the way across here to there. So that's where this thrust climbs up. Okay, so now we can put in the other units just to get some detail on this ramp shape. Um, so I'll pop the pin here and I'll put in the base of the darker brown unit there and the top of the darker brown unit, line it all up carefully there. So these two picks are the base and top of this darker brown unit. Take these across and here they go. One and then onto the top of the dark of the darker brown unit there and then eventually that thrust climbs up to then it merge onto this one so that thrust climbs out of the purple and then goes up into here so that's the thrust trajectory through here and we can simply keep going now and put the rest of the structures on in this fashion to see how they transfer displacement from deep from the purple and brown rocks up into the blue and green and eventually the yellow as they thrust climb section from um, from over here on the left to right. Well, we've got an interesting situation here, haven't we? We restored um, these two, which are these two thrust slices, but the next thrust slice along, which restores to here, well, that's been eroded out. So there's clearly some kind of um, anticline in here, um, which the crest of which has been eroded. So we're gonna to have to draw that in to complete that restoration. I'm not gonna do that now, I'm going to move into the deeper part of the section down in here where the stratigraphy uh, is all shown on the cross section. So we've got a complete interpretation. We don't have to draw anything in, in all the decisions are being taken. So let's get another map strip and pop these thrust slices on. So I'm just going to continue putting the base of these brown units on. That's the leading thrust at depth, this one here. So we're going to go into the hanging ball now and put in the base of these brown units here and just pop these thrusts on. One base of these browns again, around we go to there, here we go, a very long thrust sheet here, just make sure we can see it, there we go, to there, and then these little ones, this little one here, and then finally this one here, which takes us right to the end of the section. there and I'll just put an L there which represents that point L. So that's the length unraveled for these brown units or the base of the brown units on the cross section. Let's transfer this information across onto our template and here we go. We can pop these on. Remember let's just line that up quite carefully with the thrust. Pop these on one, two, three, four loose lines. Let's just make sure we've got all those. So plonk them back on in here. One, two, three, four, and there is our, our loose line at the end, L, which I'll just label up to there. So our restoration for the base, um, I'm just gonna pop on the top of the dark brown in here now uh, with the other side of my map strip. So again, I'm just gonna pop that on there. We can do it more carefully if we need to, just to put the top of the dark brown in. One, two, into the long one now, which is right over here. In there, this little, little bitty one here. And then finally the measurement down to the loose line at the back. To there that point. Let's just put that information across top of the dark brown. Here we go. It's quite interesting. Top of the dark brown. One, two, three, four. And our loose line's right over here. I'm just going to check that whether we got that right. Yeah. So that's quite interesting. So the, it looks like there's a there's an issue here because we've got an extra length at the a restoration of the top of the top of the brown which might mean that that ramp here should be cutting out somewhat earlier like this so that the section 
length is slightly less for this upper sheet because we're generating a loose line that's all, that's coming around like that. Meanwhile, we can just join up the thrusts that we have got um, like this, going down into the lower section. Climbing out, and they go, and they all run along the top of this um, beige unit here. In one form or another, this last little thrust slice in here, like that, and the, these ones detach from the base of this purple unit, something like that. So there we have that part of the restoration. So. What we can do now is because we, we know how much stratigraphy there is at depth, if we can make some assumptions about the amount of interbed slip between these brown units and the blue and green, we know how much green we need to have in our cross section and we could use that information to sketch in the amount of fold that's been eroded in these structures in here to see whether uh, these lengths that we can now draw in are appropriate for the amount we need to have on our restored template. Not going to do that now. I think that's enough to get the idea of how this cross section can be restored. And we've already picked out a problem here, which allows us to tweak our interpretation at depth in here, just to make it work and get this, need to get this situation where the loose line at the back is more or less perpendicular uh, to bedding. And it isn't in the restoration of the structures that we've got on our cross section at the moment. We need to edit them. So here's our restoration. We've got the cross section and we've got the stratigraphy laid horizontally, all those thrust sheets put back in place. And we can see the trajectory of thrust climbing up section from a basal detachment, climbing these various ramps and other detachments here, and then eventually climbing an array of other ramps out here. We've used the pin at the front and assumed there was no interbed slip beyond that so that we could make measurements and transfer them from the cross section to the restoration. And we've checked as we've gone what's going on in the interpretation by constructing the intermediate loose line so that we can resolve any issues that may occur in the more outlying structures before they move further on into this cross section, further more towards the hinterland, towards the left. But our section hasn't quite worked. At the end in here, looks like there's some alterations we need to make to some of the geometries at depth and we haven't finished yet because we still need to infer the geology that's been eroded away to account for the this section length of the green horizon by drawing it back in over these eroded fold structures. That's for another day. So that's the basics of the mechanics of restoring a cross section onto an undeformed template using the line length method.